Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministry. Woo-hoo. I hope you had a great week, and I ask the Lord to give you a better week coming up. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your keeping power, your healing power, your delivering power, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for being all in all to us, Lord. We ask you to continue to watch over us, continue to build up the ministry, Lord. Continue to watch over each and every one of Father, under the sound of our voice, Father God. Direct our paths in the way you want us to go, Lord. Give us peace and understanding, Father God, and more important, Lord, help us to minister to your people. Father God, we just ask you, Father, continue to shed your light on, light on us, Lord, and to make us bold warriors for you, Lord, to speak what thus said the Lord. Help us to grow in your word, walk in your word, and do your word. And we thank you, Father, in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you were able to join us this morning for our Sunday school lesson. Our Sunday school lesson was taught by Minister Michael Eccles, Jr. And the lesson was called God's Kingdom of Peace. The devotional reading came from John chapter 16, verses 20 to 33. The background on scripture, as well as the lesson, came from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. And uh, the lesson is posted on our Facebook as well as on YouTube. So if you didn't get a chance to review it or listen to us this morning, please do so. If you have any questions, send those to us so we can um, address those questions. But he talked about the prophecy that was given to Isaiah, talking about the um, the kingdom. And not only what we're going through now, but also what we will go through in the future. So please, if you get an opportunity, please review those lessons because you know, we need the word for us to grow. And without the word, we're not going to grow. Amen. Next week's lesson is called God's Servant King. The devotional reading comes from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 49. The background scripture will come from Ezekiel, as well as the lesson, will come from Ezekiel chapter 50, I mean chapter 37, verses 15 to 28. So please read that in advance so you'll be prepared for Sunday school lesson next week. Sunday school starts at 8.45 a.m. Um, you can come in person or by Zoom or Facebook. So we're looking forward to that. Um, as a few notices for us, remember next Sunday is Communion Sunday. So if you need your communion cups, please let us know. We'll drop them off, mail them, or however we need to get it to you. Um, also, for those individuals who are watching our Sunday school lessons, you know, we get ready to transition into a new year. So if you need Sunday school books for the upcoming year, please email and text us so we can um, include your request in our order. So if you need Sunday school books for next year, this is our books, we need the new, new books starting in September, please let us know. Outreach. Our outreach, um, next outreach will be June 24th. Again, as always, we're going to be at Fed and Front Street, <coughs> passing out various things to those that's in need. So if you can contribute, if you can come down to assist us or pray for us, it will be very much appreciative. Very much appreciative. June 24th, we're there. We start serving people at 8 a.m. So if you can meet us there by 7.30, quarter of 8, great, because it just takes us a little bit of time to set up to get everything out. All right, I'm going to stop now for an uh, announcement from the pastor, and then I'll come back and read the scripture for today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We are, I guess you guys can see, we're not at, no longer are we at the um, Horizon Theaters. Not because we, um, as I said last week, we paid our bills, we did all we were supposed to do, but we were told by management that because of the early shows during the summer, he wouldn't have a space for us. So we're here at my home, 612 Henderson Road, for our virtual services, but the virtual services are open to whoever wants to come. Starting July 
the first week of July, I believe it's July the 2nd, July 2nd, the first week, we're going to be at another location. We're going to be at 2516 North Rolling Road. So all my people from my old home, our own neighborhood where we came from, we're going to be back in our, our old area where, we, we, where our kids are raised up, North Rolling Road in Windsor Mill, Maryland. On the first and second Sundays of the month, we'll be there. Sunday number one and number two, we'll be there. We'll also have our communion service move from the our communion service will move from the um, third Sunday to the first Sunday. So we have communion over there on uh, Roman Road, twenty five sixteen. Now we're posting this, so you'll have it, twenty five sixteen North Roman Road. So all of our people over there in Windsor Mill and. Randall Stanley, you come by and give us a visit, amen? Amen. We're going to be there. We're going to go. We're going to be there for the first and second Sundays. The remaining Sundays, the third and fourth Sundays, will be here at, we're calling this our virtual location. Anybody who wants to come to our virtual location, you can come. My home is 612 Henderson Road. This will just be a place we have virtual service. We have people here right now with us. So we understand it's a distance, but we give you the opportunity to, to attend both services. But this is officially our virtual uh, platform, and then our in-person our in-person platform will be on Rolling Road, but also it also still it won't change anything for those who view us by Facebook and virtually will be online both at both locations. Hope it's not confusing. All we're doing is moving. We're gonna be one church, two locations. All right, one virtual, one in person. And I'll again I'll announce once again our communion service will move to that first Sunday, so we'll be first Sunday communion. In our new location starting on July the 2nd, the first Sunday in July. Now, Bible study will resume in September, but it won't be on Friday night. Got a lot of changes to you, but I'll keep announcing it will be on Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. starting in September. All right, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so I pray that was not confusing. Okay. We do have a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So get your Bibles. We're going to be reading in Acts chapter 2. We're going to be concentrating on verses 14 to 21. Now I'm going to be reading the New King James Version. Can you mind standing for the reading of the word? Acts chapter 2, <coughs> verses 14 to 21. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servant and on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Read that one, one more time. And who shall, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. The next portion we'll hear will be at our my selection from Minister Bashtar Echols, followed by Minister Echols will be Pastor Echols with the word of God. Praise the Lord, family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, family. Put your left hand together and let's praise the Lord. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Anybody just out here living on a trust, living on a promise? Just trusting God. The Bible says that if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. This ministry is based off of trust. Yeah, amen. When one door closes, another one is amen. open. Literally the same Sunday. Yes, yes. I'm just so grateful. No matter what I go through 
and it's been rough for some time, yes, yes. I can trust yes. in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. No matter what. He has never failed me, and I know he won't start failing us now. Amen. And I hope that if you are not able to trust, that God gives you the grace to trust him. Amen. 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 Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Yes, yes. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know with the says the Also, she's going to be our youth minister. 
Amen. 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 We have a new Sunday, July. Is it July? Yes, July. The last Sunday, the fifth Sunday of yeah. July, and our young people are going to take the over. 30th. 35 and under, and she'll be the preacher that morning. Our young people are going to take over. And it kind of slides with what I want to talk this morning about. We had the scripture read before us in Acts second chapter 14 to 21, continuation of the message I gave not too long ago in Acts about the coming of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. And so I wanted us to flow into that because I want each of us to be reminded, each of us to remind of this, that God wants to use you. Amen. 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 That's all I want to say is when God wants to use you. So look at your neighbor and tell him. God wants to use you. God. That's right. So that's right. You. 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 God wants to use you. Now touch yourself and say, what? God wants to use me. God wants to use me. Now say a little prayer. God, God anyway, anyway, you want to use me. You want to use me. I say yes. I say yes. Hallelujah. Y'all believe that? Y'all ready to get up, God? Amen. Anyway, you want to use me, I say yes. I'm, I've been, I guess, um, talking to God a lot about things I hear and see, not only in the circles that I'm in, but in other circles, ministerial circles. And I'm just kind of wrestled with the fact that in many circles, God's, help me say this, Holy Ghost, God's supernatural power is not uh, yielded to or spoke of in a positive way. Mm. Oftentimes, when it comes to supernatural, people will back off of the supernatural. And here, Kingdom Praise, I don't want us to be afraid when we hear Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't want us to be afraid to know about being baptized into Christ. I don't want us to be afraid to move into the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Because in many places the gifts are not understood or taught or really explained. But Paul said in Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, that he didn't want us ignorant about spiritual gifts. Which means what? He wants us to know that we have spiritual gifts available to us. As a matter of fact, each one of us, I tried to explain this last time, each one of us that belong to Christ have been given at least one spiritual capability. Amen. This is not something you go to school to learn. This is not somebody somebody trains you in. This is a supernatural ability that the Holy Spirit gives you to operate and serve the body of Christ. Amen. So I want you to know if nobody ever told you, it's your gift. Amen. Amen. You're gifted. You're gifted. You're gifted. And how do I know you're gifted? It's because when you come to Christ, the Spirit comes in you, and He gives you at least one gift. Alright? So, let's think of this. All of us that are here in the room today, those of you at home who can understand and visualize this, everybody that's in this room right now came in through one door. And there's some things that you can't get outside that door, you get in the door. Outside the door, yes, it's good weather, but it's not always. You get shelter, some uh, refreshments. If you live here, you get rest. and re re You don't get it outside the door. But once you come in, there's some privilege you get inside, you don't get outside. What if I was to tell you, that was this, this imagine now, there's no other doors in my house, just imagine it's the only door there. I was the only way to get in the door, you got to come through this. The only way to get in here is to go through that one door. Right? I'm here to let you know that Jesus Christ is the only door. Amen. 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 And once you come into Christ, you step into a whole new arena. Yeah, follow me. Once you Amen. accept what Christ has done, what happens, you're supernaturally transferred out of the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of his son. Ain't good news? Amen. You're taken out of the clutches of the evil one, and you're now put into the hands of God. And once you come into the body, what happens? Something supernatural happens to you and I. The moment you believe, when you come through the door, immediately the Holy Spirit moves in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to feel. You don't have to look at your hands, your hand looks new. You don't have to, you don't have to shout, swing off the chair, roll the floor. Mm -hmm. But immediately, what happens? When you come into Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into you. Amen. We used to say it like this in school. One of my professors would call us, he said, he would call it ribs. Something you get is, how many like ribs? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. <laughs> it's a good way to remember what happened. As soon as you are born again, you get ribs. R stands for regeneration. Mm -hmm. 
That means that he makes you new inside. Anybody had God do something in your life? I guess. Mm -hmm. Regeneration turns you. It doesn't, you don't, all your ways will change at one time, but guess what? You begin to go in a different, different direction. He takes your heart and he turns it in a different direction. Being born and being re regenerated. Then what's next? R I, he in, the Holy Spirit indwells you. Right. He comes to live in your heart. Amen. This is not something that happens after this all happens the moment you believe, y'all. You're regenerated. You're indwelt by the Spirit. And the Spirit of God empowers us to live. Y'all know we can't live. Yo, I'm going to tell you right now. You cannot live this Christian life in your own strength. You cannot change yourself. But you can be transformed. By renewing your mind, you can be transformed. We cannot change ourselves. We cannot alter ourselves. We're not in this Christian life in order to, uh, 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 what is it, have a, a self-help book. Will we get along and learn how to uh, uh, do things to make ourselves better? We recognize because we came to Christ, we have nothing to work with. He said, pull yourself up by your boots. We have no bootstraps. <laughs> we don't have shoes. All we have is Christ Amen. and Him crucified. So we have to recognize this, that we get regeneration, we get indwelling, we also get baptism. The last thing, I want to make sure I mention baptism. And immediately when I say baptize, people think about water. I'm not talking about a water baptism because water baptism doesn't change you. This is the baptism of the Spirit. In water baptism, this is what happens in water baptism. Uh, when, when John the Baptist came on the scene, John the Baptist said this. He says, I baptize you with water. But you shall be baptized. But he comes after me. He's going to baptize you with the Spirit. Amen. So this is not a water baptism. Because water baptism is a symbol of what's happening inside of us. This is a spirit baptism. The moment you believe the Holy Spirit. Well, let me tell you. Let me actually put it the way it happens. When you get baptized with water, the preacher or deacon, whoever's dunking you, takes you. And he's the one that takes you and puts you down in the water. Baptism. But here, the spirit baptism is Jesus that baptizes you. Amen. And what does he do? He baptizes you not with water, but in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that spiritual baptizer places you into the body of Christ. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you today? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you a story. I'm giving you a leading story. He baptizes you in the body of Christ. Now that you're in Christ, it gives you a, rene a unique relationship. You no longer standing outside ringing the bell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because you can't get everything that you need outside the door. You got to come in. He's the only way to get in. Amen. Once you come in, he gives you uh, regeneration. He gives you the indwelling. He gives you baptism. But also, let me get my answer where he gives you, he seals you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God a praise right there. Amen. You know, you know when the letter is done, what do you do? You seal it. Why? To make sure the contents cannot come out until it gets to where it's got to go. Well, I want to let you know that the Holy Spirit sees, seals us, and we'll be sealed until we get where we gotta go. Y'all better give God some praise, right there. I mean, the same God that saves you is the same God that keeps you. Yes. Aren't you glad about that? Yes. I'm the ex. I guess y'all can see the excites me. Y'all <laughs> realize that I'm not kept by my own power. I'm not kept by my own strength. I'm not kept by my own wisdom. How many of that? I had to rely on that. We've been lost a long time ago. Because you seem like every time you make a step forward. Can you praise making stuff forward? Something happens. Yeah. Yeah. To shift us. And we can sit back and say, oh, forget it. Oh, shucks. But you know what? We decide we're going to follow God. Yeah. Man. And wherever the glory cloud leaves, we're going to go there. Yeah. So what I want, what I'm, what I'm trying to get to today, this may be just an in-house situation. I want us to get to a place where moving in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen, somebody. Because that's how the body ministers. The body ministers through the gifts of the Spirit. Now that you're in Christ, you become His now hands. You know, if you read the book of Acts real close, you see that the first verse tells us these are the things that Jesus both began to do and to teach. Well, lets us know there's still work to be done. Mm -hmm. Jesus told the disciples, I'm going to leave you, I'm not leaving you comfortless. So what is He doing? Jesus is still working, but He's working through the church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's still healing. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad about it? He's still delivering. Aren't you glad about it? Mm -hmm. He's still opening blind eyes. He's still doing the work, but he's not doing it 
in and in of itself, he's doing it through his body. We have now the body of Christ. He is the head. We are the body. Mm-hmm. And guess what? That means that none of us are above anybody else. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 God places the people in the body in the way the Bible says as he sees fit. You know the Bible tells you? You got to read them down. In, in chapter um, 14, he says we ought to follow love and desire spiritual gifts. How many desire spiritual gifts? I want you to start desiring spiritual gifts. Obey the word of God. Yes. God, what is it you want me to do, Spirit? Now, I'm not talking about what you train. A lot of stuff we see today is performance. Mm-hmm. Train performances. Mm-hmm. But I want to know, I want to have a church that's led by God's Spirit. Yes. And we get here in this chapter. We see in this chapter, that the portion we read before, that the characteristic of this age is that the sons and the daughters will prophesy. Mm-hmm. Come on now, somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm talking to the young people right now. Amen. Amen. That the sons, that mean the young people, gonna have a word. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I reading right? Did y'all read that Bible this morning? Amen. The characteristic of this age now, back in the Old Testament, there were only certain people that were known to be prophets. Mm-hmm. They were known to be in the home. But God is saying in this day, He's gonna do what? He's not gonna drip like He did on Isaiah, drip over here on Elijah. He's gonna pour out His Spirit Amen. on all flesh. Amen. And the son, and that's a young folk, the son and the daughter are gonna have the use of God. So, my sermon this morning, what is it? Lord, use me. Amen. God wants to use you. Amen. Amen. God wants to use you. Amen. I want to let you know He didn't save you to sit and sour. He saved us to do a work through our lives. See what God does? He works for us. You know, God, you know what God works for you? you know what he, he works salvation for us on our behalf. He does a work for us. Once we accept the work He does for us, He does a work in us. Isn't that good news? Yes. Sanctifying us. He's cleansing us. He tells us how we live our lives. And then He gets to the place He does a work through us. He works for us to work in us to work through us. I had to have my glove this morning so I can show y'all how we need a glove. I had a glove I went in mind, but you can get the idea of a glove would look like. A glove on the table. I had a glove on the table. Bill, right over there on the uh, uh, server, right there's a glove. Back here in the corner, in the dining room. Right there, turn that way, right here inside. See, see a glove right there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a dirty glove. It's a glove. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a world by itself, ain't it? Dirty glove. <laughs> 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 it's a dirty glove, but it's still usable. Amen. Amen. When, before I was saved, I was like this glove with nothing inside. What good is a glove if it's not being used? I was a glove. Yeah, I had my life, living my life, trying to live my best life, getting what I, what I want to get on. But yet, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So I was dead to the things of God. Like, you know, when the Bible says someone's spiritually dead, that doesn't mean they're not responsive. That means they're not responsive to spiritual things. We do go into uh, uh, someone who's dead. We had a funeral yesterday. You go into a room and their body's laying there. That person's not there. They're unresponsive to the world outside of them. So when you're spiritually dead, you're not responsive to the spiritual world. But once you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord, what happens is the Holy Spirit moves in. Y'all see the Holy Spirit? He coming in slow. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and although the glove is dirty, it's still usable. Yes. Can I get a witness? Somebody. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Somebody Amen. would even have thrown the glove away and said, because it's tarnished, I will no longer use it. But God says, I want to use you. Amen. That's all God uses anyway, the glove. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now the Holy Spirit comes in me, right? And now I'm able to do some things for God because now I'm responsive to the things of God. But guess what? He may be in me, but he's not fully controlling my life. Why? Because I still want to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And he's a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 He's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to make you do anything. But he does if you yield to me, I'll, I'll use you. Mm-hmm. So now the Holy Spirit's in me, but He's residing, but he's not presiding. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I don't pay no attention. I invited somebody to my house, but I don't pay no attention. Mm. I don't, you know, when I get up in the morning, I think this morning, I got up this morning early, so I just wanted to talk to him. I like to walk and talk to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I got up early, walk and talk with the Lord, then get a quiet place so I can just walk and talk. 
And I just started thinking about some people's worship experience only starts when they get to church. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you where worship starts. As soon as you wake your eyes up in the morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. That's worship, amen. amen. Yes. That's worship. And for me, all night long, sometimes the Lord would just pour scriptures through me. I can just, I had another pastor preach, I was going to preach today, but I kept hearing this, this Acts chapter, so I changed the whole verse, changed the whole subject, changed everything, because I want to be what? Yielded to the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. We're so programmed and so trained and so trained, yeah. the Holy Spirit can't move in because we're in the way. Mm -hmm. Let me set this example to y'all. This is what I'm talking about, the Spirit using you. There's many gifts, all right? This guy has a prayer meeting at his house, right? The guy has a prayer meeting at the house, and uh, a woman comes in, and she says to, she, he allows for spiritual gifts to be exercised. Everybody don't allow it to happen. He allows it to be exercised. A woman says, well, I think I got a word from, I got a word from the Lord. She comes in to another lady. She says, God says he hates mommies and daddies. She says, this, I got a word for this young lady. To us, y'all look at me like, hmm, that ain't right. That's strange, isn't it? Why don't you hear those stories? The lady that the woman spoke to broke down crying. You know why? Because she was abused at her home by her mother and father. Mm -hmm. And when they sexually abused her, they told her it would play in mommy, it would play in mommies and daddies. Y'all get the picture? Oh. Come on now, somebody. Wow. True story. So, can y'all understand that? So we need to be, can you imagine, if we have a church that that's spiritually attuned, people are going to get delivered. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. Y'all want it? That's what I want. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 That woman was willing to say something that was totally foolish. But she knew the Spirit of God laid on her heart to say it. She didn't even know why it was being said. But she gave herself to God and somebody got to that. This girl understood. What did that do for the young lady? She understood that God knew what she had been through. And God did not like. God said he hates mommies and daddies. Yeah. That word wasn't for you. And that word was just for her. What? Yeah. But if God has a word, don't you want to be the one children? Amen. Yes. For your classmates and for, for your, your co-workers and all those things. You want to be the one that had that word from God. you got to be a tune and let the Spirit of God use you how he want to use you. Mm -hmm. The sons and the daughters will prophesy. That's what it says, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The young men, I got some young men here. The young men are going to see visions. Come on now, somebody. That means that God's going to let you know what he wants you to do and how to do it. This is the, this sounds strange. Y'all ever heard this you know, preach before like this? You might hurt some more no. priests like this. I'm in, I'm in the Word. Peter, you know, when, when the Holy Ghost came on them, they were baptized and filled, and the people thought they were drunk. Peter said, these aren't drunk, as you suppose, but this is that what Joel talked about. That's right. Peter said, this is what's happening. I want you to understand, this is what happened. And the last thing, God's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. The sons and the daughters are going to prophesy. Amen. 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 The, 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 the young men are going to see visions. And the old man will have dreams. Mm -hmm. And the God's already started dealing with me. You got to stop trivializing your dreams. Mm -hmm. They actually didn't even know I think about dreams. He came and told me a vivid dream he had the other day. It was really real. But I used to tell people all the time, see, I'm changing. I used to tell people all the time, I don't, I don't put no stock in dreams because uh, you could just have something bad to eat. Like, like, and every dream is not a mess from I'm going to say every, every dream is a mess from God. I'm just more aware now that what characterizes this age is dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. We got to understand that. I remember, and I, I've had, and I, I want to share a couple things, and I'll, I'll go to my seat shortly, but I remember at a certain place and a certain person was having migraines all their life. Severe migraines all their life. And one day the spirit came upon me and I went to that person. I didn't know what I was speaking to. But all I said was, no more. And they fell out on the floor. Came back and told me they have not had a migraine since that day. Amen. Amen. What am I saying that for? I'm saying because I'm telling you stuff I know about. Y'all haven't seen me. Y'all haven't seen me really 
moving like I have moved before. I think a couple of y'all have seen, yeah. haven't seen me move. And I don't, I, I'm asking God to let me be released in this area because we're so busy trying to play the church, we're not going to be the church. Mm -hmm. Real ministry takes place when God's people yield themselves yeah. to what God has for us. How many want everything God has for you? Yes. I want everything. Amen. 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 How do we get started in this journey of discovering our spiritual gifts? You have to, if you see a need, you meet that need if you're able to. I think about Dawn, she's here today. I think about how we first got started. The first time we met at our location, she wanted, she was one of one. I said, let me get a place. I said, let me get a place. And we got to that first location. John came with her arms, her arms filled with stuff. Uh, coffee, and juice, and snacks, and all that. She just came. You know what I asked her to do it? And, but you know what that showed me? That showed me a lot about her. She don't know why I pick on her so much to do stuff. And pulled her up to be a deaconess and trainer. But that showed me a lot. That showed me that she was willing to do whatever it needed to do to meet the need. And when you find yourself in that place, that you're willing to see a need and meet that need, God just may get, be gifting you in that area. I know people right now think about it. I don't want to call names. They're looking at them right now. I know one young lady in particular, she and her husband, had the gift of giving. And they give to this ministry as much as they can give. And they give the outreach as much as they can give. But they can never make a service because it's not convenient for them to get to the services. But I know they're part of us. Mm -hmm. They support us when they can. This woman was out of work, her husband out of work, but they still give. Mm -hmm. She's sick, he's sick, they still give. One day she stepped to me. I don't want to call her name. I know she's watching now. She didn't do it for that reason. One day she stepped to me and she blessed me. So I'm telling y'all, she blessed the church and she blessed me. I mean, I'm just peeling hundreds back. <laughs> Amen. 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 And so I'm trying to tell you, some people have the gift of giving. Not that they're not trying to do it. They're just givers. And even when they don't have to give, they make a way to give. Even when they're down, they make a way to give. Amen? Even when they're struggling, they make a way to give. Even when they don't know how they're going to make it, they make a way to give. Why? Because the giving doesn't start with your ability. It starts with the heart. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? And then God gives you the ability to do. So we, we, I want you to understand this today. When I'm talking about gifts, gifts are real. I remember... Uh, my first experience with the Spirit of God. Everybody's, I, I had kind of hesitate to tell because people look for a spirit. It's not about experience. It's about, it's about something that just happened to me uh, when I was a young teenager. I didn't understand all these things. I went to revival. I don't know, some of y'all might know Shane Bach. Any of you might know Shane Bach. Anybody, you know Shane Bach? Way back. Mm -hmm. uh, real powerful little guy. You see, he passed away now. He used to preach. And I went downtown to what was called the city center. Now it's whatever it is now. I don't know what it is now. Or something else, and had a, somebody's mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, whatever it's called, it was called Civic Center back in my day, right? And sometimes I still call it Civic Center. They say, You date yourself. But anyway, I went to this revival. At the end of this revival, there's some friends of mine with me. Um, Shamai gave a call, altar call, for people to come up for salvation. I was so surprised that all these people had been jumping around and praising God. <coughs> they had one you saved. They was going through the motion. But my heart poured out to them. All I wanted to do was see them saved. And before I knew it, the Holy Spirit overcame my life. From my head to my toe. And I went down to the flow. Amen. Amen. I didn't know what was going on. All I knew was this power surged through my body like I never felt before, like electricity. Amen. Amen. And that's the kind of power. Then, then when I got up, I laid hands on her. I didn't know, I didn't know who she was. The lady in front of me, I just put my hand on top of her head. I don't know what happened to her. I was just, the Spirit just <laughs> tapped me to touch her. And I was done. Then when I came to, when I finally came to, I was out on the street down on Baltimore Street. I was telling everybody, Jesus loves you. I guess I'm like crazy now. Jesus loves you. Oh, he loves you. I was so overcome with the love of God, so overwhelmed by his power. And this is, this is one of the experiments that let, let you know that, that God wants to give us power, not to sh just to shout and fall out, but power to give service to him. Yeah. If, if the spirit of you running and shouting and yelling and don't know how to speak to each other, that's not the spirit of God. 
Swinging on stuff and talking, can't talk to each other, speaking in tongues, they can't talk to you. That's not the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God comes on you, He floods you with love. Yeah. He removes the animosity. Amen. He removes the stuff. No matter how bad people treated you, He gives your heart to love them. That's the Spirit of God whose love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So I want you to know that, that God that lives by the body. So can you say, God, God, come on. God, God wants to, wants to use, me. use me. Say, even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. Listen, even me in my, in my dirty glove self. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Even me in my waywardness. Even me in my backsliding self. Even me in my, 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 my bitter tongue. Even me, God, let some drops now just fall. Hallelujah. Amen. Just fall on me right now. Because when you let the, let the drops fall on me, it's going to fix my heart. Amen. It's going to fix my life. Amen. It's going to change my direction when you come and give me that touch I need. Amen. Amen. So I want you, Kingdom Praise Ministry, and all those listening to me, to now begin to desire spiritual gifts that God would take you into a place we are operating in the spiritual gifts. Amen. 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 So I, I recognize um, that what I'm doing now, uh, this is how God called me to be an extemporaneous preacher, to preach out of the soul and not out of notes. That's how God called me. And when I first got started, that's what I did. Amen. But through the years, I started seeing what everybody else was doing. And I tried to be like everybody else. And I used all these long notes. And everybody's not called to do what I'm doing. But that's just the call that God gave me to do. When I read notes, I follow up. But when I give what God put on my heart, it always comes out all right. Amen. 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 And I want to be so on point that I can speak what the Spirit has for me to say, not to raise the crowd, not to emotionally uh, uh, work you up, but to give you a word that will do some good. Amen. Amen. Give you a word that's going to help you grow, but open your eyes to see some other things you may not have thought of before. If God has spiritual gifts, the church, y'all, the church is supposed to be run by the gifted people, the spiritually gifted people. Mm-hmm. Not by organizations, not by boys that don't know God. Amen. Amen. I remember I'm about to go to my seat. And I remember years ago I was I was um, hanging around this um, Father Zen Pino. He's probably passed by now. He was an Episcopal priest who would come in town. The St. Timothy's over there on Ingleside. He would come and visit. He, he was a radio priest I listened to. And I remember being so impressed by him. And I think that that's the kind of church that I want us to be. Because when he came, he brought his own staff with him. He brought his own ushers. He brought all his own people with him. So it would be nothing for you to walk in and see the ushers praying with the people coming in. Amen. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? Amen. You know, when, when, when the church is moving in its gifts, you don't have to send people to the pastor. You can handle it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. When, when, when the church is operating right, you have the spiritual ability to do what anybody else can do. When the church is moving, there's no kings and queens in position. There's only servants. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Operating as God sees fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He says, rather that you might prophesy. He says in chapter 14, rather that you, what are you giving that word? Can you imagine being the kind of person that had that one point word for somebody who's in need? Being that kind of person that can give that word of wisdom to someone who's in trouble and God will use you to say something that will lift their hearts? One man said, <laughs> I would listen to one preacher talk about this experience eight years ago. Nothing happened. This stuff didn't happen every day, but every day something really spectacular happened where he was went to this meeting. And this meeting was like after the church meeting, some leaders got together, and the guys were at the service, after the service were prophesying to each other. He just sat there because he was like, this stuff is strange. So finally, the last person to come to will be him. He said in the room, the guy just looks at him and says, Um, you've been praying about this and named his prayer. And your, he said, in your hotel room, you've been praying about this. Didn't tell him round about what he said. Told him the exact words he talked to God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he said, and, and you're a pastor, aren't you? He said, he said, he said, yeah. He said, well, you've been concerned about this, that, you have going in your church. I want to let you know how that's going to be um, rectified. God's going to do this, that, and the other for the church. And said he went home after that. He said he was he he went home to his hotel room. He went home and started looking for uh, a device 
Mm-hmm. You know, listen to Vice. <laughs> <laughs> he thought his room was bugged. <laughs> he kind of came to conclude that God could do it. Y'all, y'all believe God could do anything? Oh, yes, he can. Yes, he can. So God let this man see what this man was praying, praying about in the secret. Why, what was the purpose of Let him know that God heard it. Y'all, y'all know it's no greater thing. Yeah, yeah, God, if I say I heard what you said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ain't no greater show us that I see what you're going through. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. I know your struggles. Mm-hmm. But God does know us. He does know everything he sends us somebody to. Confirm that. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does. He, he, he sends somebody to confirm that, you, you know, it may seem like things are, are rocky and shaky, but I want you to know that you're not rocky and shaky. And, and one time I was praying to God, I was talking to God about this thing like, um, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I make a decision, this happened, make a decision, this happened. And he said, you know what you're doing. He said, you trust in me. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. You know what you're doing. You might not know all the facts, but you know what you're doing. Amen. You know what you're doing because you trusted me through this whole thing. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I doubted God so much. How many know it's time to start trusting him? Amen. Amen. I doubted him so much. He worked so much out for me. I said, you know what, Lord? Okay, I'm going to stop being. I'm thinking things are not going to work out. Things went every Sunday morning I battle. Oh, you, you just don't have it. You just don't, you just don't have the word. You just so you don't preach like other people. People, all, all these things come in my mind. All this stuff attacks my mind. You know what I say, Lord? I know I don't have anything, but I got you. Yeah. That's my shoes. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell people about you. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. I don't have style and flavor and swag, but I got Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's all. It's about is do you know Jesus and can you communicate him to other people and encourage their spiritual life? That's what we're about, King of Praise. Yes. We're about walking in the Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I want to challenge each one of you here and those listening to me. Ask God to show you what your gifts are and help you walk in those gifts. Amen. 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 We had people years ago. I know I said I'd be quiet. Let me get into your head. <laughs> I had got, I had, like, I had a one young lady came in. She was a school teacher many years ago at the church. And she thought because she taught school, she could teach Bible. Mm-hmm. Boy, was that a disaster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would never walk in her classroom and try to teach her class because I'd be a mess, a loss. But people think that because you have a natural talent, it's a spiritual gift, not so. Mm-hmm. God can take that natural talent and use it as a gift you give it to him. Mm-hmm. But the spiritual gift is not something you learn to train. It's something that God gives you. You can go to school, but you don't go to school to become. You go to school because you are. Yes. And you want to be sharpened. And guess what? A lot of the stuff I learned, I got to go back and unlearn. Because when I was a, 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 a little stupid little child, I just read the Bible and believed it. Yeah. Come on now, somebody. I, I read it. I didn't know. I just read what God said in his word. And I said, this is true. Then I got out of the word. I found out everybody don't believe it like that. This was true for them, but this is not true for you. This was for this time. I mean, this is that time, and that doesn't mean it's over here. So by the time I got overlaid with all this stuff, I didn't believe the word of God. Or I just believe what I believe what people told me. Mm-hmm. Told me what the word said. But I'm getting to the place, y'all. I'm going back to my little my little boy stage. Mm-hmm. When I first started out with wide eyes mm-hmm. and looking at God's promise and saying, There he is. Yeah. Ah, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. That's what he'll do. Mm-hmm. That's his power. Yeah. That's his strength. That's what he said. I don't have to understand it all. I just got to trust it. Amen. Yes. Amen. I don't have to know it all. Because none of us do. I just got to trust it. Amen. I don't have to be it all. I can just trust him. Mm-hmm. Trust him. Amen. Yes. And trust the God that saved us is the same God who wants to what? Keep us. Keep us. Keep us. Now he wants to come in. He doesn't just want to live there. He wants to come in and fill everything. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 So he can tell me, change the sermon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He can tell me, say this to this person. Amen. Amen. And guess what? This is not just for me. This is for everybody in Amen. the body. Yes. Amen. 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 Everybody in the body has a supernatural ability, and I want all of us to tap into it. That's our challenge. King praise. Amen. 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 We go over to the west side. We want to go over walking in power. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 So people who are sick have someone to come and get healed. Amen. 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 People that are bound have someone to come and get free. Yes. Amen. 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 
We want to take the ministry of Jesus Christ and let him use us in any way he sees fit. Yes. And it's not me, it's us. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The only one that ought to be boasted about is Jesus. He's yeah. the head. Yeah. The head gives all the directions. Amen. Mm -hmm. All we do is follow and watch Amen. the word. God bless you. I want to know somebody that, that's listening to us today by in the room or by way of social media, we want to reach out to you to make sure that you made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord. If I were to walk around the room and say to each one of you, I'm going to give you a million dollars. I don't know anybody who would, would turn it down. <laughs> Amen. I'm instant me there. If I had it, kind of might do it. But if I walk around, but I come to Angie, Angie says, I don't want it. So when everybody leaves our million there, she's not a million there. Whose fault is that? Not because of offer what made to her. She just didn't want it for whatever reason. She didn't want to take handouts. <laughs> she, she thought it was a trick. Not real money. Whatever it was, she didn't want it. So she forfeited that. But Jesus Christ paid the price for the whole world. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so if you leave out without accepting what he did, there's nobody fault but yours. Amen. 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 I want you to know he gave you something more than me. When a business is done, the world destroyed, you need something more than a million dollars. Mm -hmm. You need somebody to hold you through eternity. Yes. Amen. And that's what we promise to do. Amen. Amen. So what would it profit a man if he gave the whole world and lose his soul? Nothing. Came to the world with nothing, gonna leave with nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We see it every day. Mm -hmm. This buried a friend of mine. Uh, my first girlfriend, I can't say she's alive, my wife might get upset. My first girlfriend. <laughs> same age I am, passed away. And I, I thought about her yesterday. I said, this is the way all of us are going. Only man at a time, amen? amen. But the thing is, what you going to do during that time? Yeah. I'm running for my life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To be all God want me to be, amen? amen. amen. When I get done, I want to be able to say that I did. I want to, my death there, I want to say I did what he told me. Amen. 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 It might not look like much, but Lord, I try. Hey, God, give God a praise right there. Lord, amen. I try. Amen. amen. Might not be really appreciated, but Lord, I, I, I tried to do what you told me to do. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ and to accept the payment. Salvation is free, but discipleship will cost you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Everybody, come into the salvation. Now that you're saved, God's calling you now to live a different kind of life. And that's a whole other story. I have to go to another time. Amen. Amen. I want you to know the whole story. I'm not going to give you half the story. No, the whole story. Salvation will cost you. That's the, his work for us. But then he gets to work. He's done to do work in us. Mm -hmm. He loves us too much to leave us the same way. Amen. 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 And then once he gets us straight, he will do work through us. Amen. Amen. What a glorious time, y'all, when God begins to work through his body to meet the needs of people. Amen. A glorious time. So God bless you. You have not yet received the Savior, Lord. Wherever you are, your bedside, uh, in the car, wherever you listen to this, just say a quick prayer. Lord, come into my life. Be my Savior, my Lord. He'll come in. If you ask him right, because you're reading the text today, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Shall we say? Heavenly Father, thank you for once again entering this household, entering the, the ears there of the listeners, entering the hearts, entering the minds. Lord, touch us head, head to toe, Lord. I can't say thank you enough. I, 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 I just want you to touch me directly, Lord. Expand my spiritual gifts. Show me what they are. Even if you don't show me, just use me. Yes. You don't even have to tell me what to do. Just, just give me the direction. Allow me to walk blindly. Give me, give me the ability to walk in faith. Help my unbelief, Lord. Mm -hmm. I fall short on a regular basis, but you pick me up every day. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I know I'm not the only one that's living this, this lifestyle, but Lord, we fall, but you pick us up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We trip, we stumble, but you pick us up. Thank you, Lord. We walk astray and you redirect us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I can't say thank you enough for all that you've done for me personally. I know there's so many miracles in this room. There's so many miracles under the sound of my voice right now. Lord, we know you didn't just you just didn't save us to, to heal us directly. You healed us so we can bring somebody else to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Help us be your vessels, Lord. Yes. I'm your puppet, Lord. Mm. Use my strings. Yes. Lord, please continue to touch this ministry. Give us direction. Lead us to where you want us to go. 
We, we, oh, we're walking through the, your door. Every door you open, show us that you are the only one, what, right way to go. When we're being led astray from this world, redirect us, Lord. Flip us around. Turn us around. Because we can get distracted by the shiny things. We can get, there, we can get, we can get uh, pushed astray just by looking what's around. Yes. Allow us to stop looking around and just keep looking up. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Help us, Lord. <clears throat> We're your sheep. You are our shepherd. We trust in you to kill all the snakes of the world. Yes. Stomp on these snakes for us. Lord, going through the lesson this morning, you just gave me reassurance that of the joy that's to come. Yes. Mm. Living in heavenly places where it's nothing but joy, yes. peace, love, all the fruits of the Spirit. Help, help us expand on those things, Lord. Help us to bring those things to where we are right now, Lord. Help us to guide, guide people to you. Allow us to share your peace, your joy, with all those going through darkness, the people who've gone through depression. There's so much depression out there, Lord. You pulled me out of my depression, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you. I can't say thank you. I can't thank you enough, Lord. Mm. Sometimes I just want to moan. Mm. Mm. Lord, touch, touch these people, Lord. Yes. Bring them out the darkness that you brought me out of. Yeah, I can't say thank you enough, yeah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. I can't help but think back to a pact that I made that would with one person on this earth. We made a pact that we wouldn't take our own lives. Mm. And we stay there strong together yes. to this day. Yes. Without that pact, I wouldn't be here today, Lord. Mm. But you 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 solidified that pact. After that pact was made, that's when the devil took away my legs. Mm. Mm. After that pact was made, that's when I decided to walk your way. And then I kept getting attacked and attacked and attacked. And all I could do was, I was looking at the darkness, but you were the light. Yes. Thank you, Lord. you were the light. You, you made everything around me dark so I can do nothing but look up. Yes. Yes. Lord, thank you. Thank, thank you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Take Hallelujah. control of it all, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I bend the knee to you Hallelujah. and only you. Hallelujah. Thank you, the weight of this world is nothing. Yeah. It's just death and darkness. But you are the light. Yes. You're the life. Yes. You're the truth. Yes. You are the way. Yes. The only way worth living. Yes. Yes. Lord, I just pray. I pray that you use us as a vessel yes. to draw more people to yes. you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Allow us to share that joy that we have right now. Get them out of that darkness. Jesus. We're going through a, 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 a time of attacks. People being confused by the enemy. Mm -hmm. Being confused by the, the world trying to tell them they're not the right gender. Yes. Mm -hmm. The world trying to tell them they're they're with the wrong partner. Mm -hmm. The world trying to tell them that they're broken as they are. Yes. But you can fix any of us. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I was that broken clay pot. Mm -hmm. And I had to be broken again and be rebuilt in your yes. image, Lord. Mm -hmm. Please continue to touch us, Lord. Yes. Yes. Allow us to usher in a new era. Yes, yes. Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Wow, we thank the Lord, amen. 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 The Spirit already working. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to give ourselves over to the Spirit told. This is what you want to do this week in this challenge. You want to ask God, not mechanically, but ask Him from your heart. Not just because I said so. But if you really want God to use you, say, God, I want you to use you like you never did before. Amen. Show me the gifts you had me to operate in and give me the power and the strength and the courage. It takes courage mm -hmm. to step yes. forth and operate in those gifts that you've given to me. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Help us to push you. Give me people in my life that will push me towards you and not away from you. Yes. Yes. Shame to go to church and, and, and get discouraged mm -hmm. in what God called you to do. You should be encouraged to do what God called you yes. to do. Yes. Amen. Put people around me, Lord, to encourage me to walk in your way. Yes. Pray that way this way and let's watch God work. God bless you, family. We love you. Our family, from our family to yours, King Praise Ministry, we love you. Come and join us again on next week and get ready for our new move. Amen. We're excited about what God's going to do. We haven't been that way before. It's a hall. It's a uh, banquet hall, so several differently. 
We'll do what we gotta do, amen. amen. To amen. work it for God's glory. It's gonna be it's, it, I know it's a bank of hall, but the giver is giving return to the sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So uh, keep us in your prayer. We need your prayers as we pray for you. God bless you. Keep praying.